welcome to a very special episode of Between the Pages. As you know, this week it's been Superbia Week because um, a new comic book from Boom Studios has uh, came out on Wednesday. Uh, but also today, I wanted to do a, a discussion with the very talented artist working on the book, Russell Dodderman, and he is actually streaming to us live from Los Angeles. Well, live for me, not live for you. <laughs> so, Russell, I see your studio. You're in your studio. Yep, I am here in uh, my studio in L.A. Very excited to be talking to you about Superbia. Is that where you drew it, right behind you? Yeah, that's, and there's a page there for the fourth issue that I'm going to be working on later today. Ah, I'm excellent. To How did you get started in comics? Because you actually have a background in costume design, which I think is such a great mix for comic books. Yeah, um, I've, I had a few different kind of art avenues that I was pursuing. I, you know, I started out loving animation. I was like, if I'm with my crayons, I was drawing He-Man and the Little Mermaid, and that turned into a love of animation, and then a love of um, comic books, largely, you know, from the Bruce Timm Batman animated series and the X-Men animated series. And, you know, so that I was really into comics for a long time. I drew comics, and in college, I did a lot of comic book illustration. I wrote and illustrated my first uh, graphic novel then and also started doing children's book work. So I uh, wrote and illustrated my first children's book in college and I also started to get into costume design. And so those three sort of things I've been uh, flirting with as it were. And also, I think there's an interesting fun fact about you. You worked on Captain America in the costume design department, right? So can you tell people what you did for that? Yeah, I, uh, I was just one of a handful of illustrators that uh, worked for the costume designer. And um, so that's, that's mainly what I've, I've done in the, the costume design industry. I worked on a couple movies as an illustrator. So the designer will come up with the, the design of the costumes and then, you know, give us illustrators, you know, maybe the actor's face and the photos of photo reference of the sort of costume that uh, the character would need and, and maybe say, well, this needs to go here and this needs to go here and do a little something with this and maybe a, a pose like that, you know, and then as an illustrator, you take it, all that, and you do the nice drawing that the designer will give to the director and the studio heads and to try to pitch the, the costume. But it all really kept coming back to comics for me because that seemed like the best of both worlds. And you got to do the character design, you got to do the expressions and the storytelling, and you got to do all these sort of larger-than-life things that only you can really do in comics. Well, Superbia is a real world that we're creating together, so you got to design the costumes. I did like this uh, document. I, did they give that to you? I did this extensive document oh, with yeah. pictures, and I did all these paragraphs, and I was like, I wonder how it will turn out, because I didn't know who the artist was going to be at that time. And uh, then you sent in these great uh, character designs. Like One of the things I thought was the most interesting, because it was so elaborate, was Marine Omega's costume. So how did you come about that, uh, to do all those cool things about it? Because, you know, there's, there are always patriotic superheroes. And it's like the beginning of comics. You know, he's an archetype. But you made him very distinct and very much his own. So what was, like, the thought process there? Well, the, the biggest thing from that was, in your description, you were pretty adamant about him looking like a Marine. You wanted him to look, have those sort of colors and that sort of silhouette and, and all that. So I really started there and, you know, researched uh, marine uniforms. And I think what he was ended up being based off of was one of the marine dress uniforms. Um, so, you know, then I sort of superheroed that up a bit. And with all the Meta Legion characters, they're all a little based on existing comic book characters, or at least the archetypes. So one of the interesting things about uh, the writer-artist dynamic is that I was in the middle of writing issue two when we first started talking. And uh, you'd done the character designs, and you said that two of your favorite characters were Zari and Geo. And that influenced yeah. me in the writing, because you know you, you want to know what's going on with, with what characters people like. So what about those characters stands out to you, and what are your favorite characters overall in Superbia to draw from an artistic point of view? My favorite character to draw is Zari, who um, 
everyone else will meet in issue number two. Um, she's the daughter of uh, two of, or one of the superheroes, and she's she's smart and sassy and stylish, and uh, she has killer hair. And she, I had so much fun with her. You, it really came from when in your description you mentioned that she always had huge headphones. Well, that she had headphones all the time, so. I thought that they should be huge and that that should be a really defining part of her character. And I sort of went from there. But she's super fun to draw. I also love um, Batu and the, the Metzger family. I think that they're the most interesting, um, they have the most interesting dynamic to me of any of the, the families or the couples. And like I said, I, I really liked uh, Gio. I had a lot of fun with his style, and I love the direction that you take him in over the course of the series. So I see your drawing table behind you where you create Superbia. Uh, what's your process like, though, because like of the digital aspects of things, with the way the uh, industry is evolving? My process starts and ends digitally, and then has some traditional stuff in the middle. Um, but I, I start, you know, in Photoshop, I have a page template and I start doing all my roughs in Photoshop so I'll you know it'll range from a little squiggle and then that'll turn into you know body forms and then something a little more established and uh, once I get that to a I figured that out to the point where you know I figured out where the bodies go and where the muscles go and where the, what the background looks like and the architecture then I print it out and um, the art table has a little light box uh, in it. So I transfer that to a traditional comic board and then do all the penciling uh, traditionally um, by hand. And then I, once that's done, I scan it in and take it back to Photoshop and clean everything up in Photoshop. And for this project, um, there's no inker on the project. So I was doing sort of digital inking over my own pencils. Um, I try to keep things pretty tight uh, in general, so then I can just clean stuff up in Photoshop, darken the lines. Uh, if I'm meant to fill in an area with uh, solid black, I'll fill that in in Photoshop. And then it's sent off uh, to Gabriel Casada, our colorist, who um, works his magic with all the color, and, and then that's that. You're very good with expressions. Uh, which, because you know, a lot of times some comic book artwork is very static. Uh, but uh, one of the things that, because I know I don't like that as a reader, I don't like everything being explained by dialogue. I like to see it, um, you know, shown, you know, because it's a visual medium. So, as I'd said in an interview for Superbia, uh, I put a lot of, tr I had to put a lot of trust in you to convey beats. So, just basically, what made you understand how important that is as an artist? Character to me is the most important thing really across all, you know, forms of medium, whether I'm doing a children's book or, you know, you're designing a character or you're doing a comic book, it's, it's really all about the character. And I, I love doing different facial expressions or different, conveying something, different emotion with different body language. And that's part of the fun for me. Um, Technically, <laughs> when I'm doing it, it's a lot of me in the mirror sort of acting out what I would think that character would be doing. So actually, I do a lot on this webcam and, you know, I'll sort of, well, if I were feeling this way, what, what position would I make and what face would I make? Oh, that's great. That's like an animator. Yeah, exactly. And so just as a preview, uh, Superbia number one is already out. But uh, can you, without spoilers, what was your favorite thing to draw in issue two? <sighs> oh, well... It has to be all the Zari moments. Um, uh, she, well, audiences will get to meet her. And um, really every page she was in in that issue, I, I had a blast drawing. And, and there's some, some good stuff in the, the moments that happen with her that'll pay off later. So I'm excited for people to see that. Yeah, she's involved in a big reveal. Yeah, yeah, she is.